What's going on, guys? I'm Barry Gito. I'm here at Rampage Jackson. We have a very special guest, but before we jump into the Jackson podcast, I just want to let you guys know we are still running one of the biggest sales of the year, up to 50% off site wide, all real gold, real silver chains made in Italy. We have bracelets, we have chains, we have pendants, we have rings, everything you need. It makes the perfect gift. And if you guys are looking for the special limited edition clothing, hats, eyewear, luggage that we sell, it's on a special website now, club.jackson.com. You can use the promo code BFCLUB25 for 25% off site wide. And you can wear all the clothing that you've been seeing me and Rampage wear. Now that he looks like a model, I'm sure you've seen a lot more uh, pieces on him than you see on me. But today he's camouflaged, so hopefully you guys can see him in general. All right, guys, we are here with Josh Emmett, the one and only. You already know. You know what those hands can do. We're here with Rampage Jackson, my co-host. This is another episode of the Jackson Podcast, but this is a special episode. This is the 2023 Jackson Podcast Awards. The 2023 awards include multiple categories like knockout of the year, fight of the year, performance of the night, all kinds of things. So before we hop right into that and we jump into watching these videos, we want to announce that these top five fights are the top five knockouts of the year with the number one knockout of the year being very special. And when we get to that, we'll announce the award for who won knockout of the year for 2023 Jackson Podcast Awards. So we're going to hop in with number five. We have Justin Gaethje's KO over Dustin Poirier with a head kick. Oh, I remember watching that one. <laughs> oh, look at the backflip. Yeah. That's you know, crazy, that backflip every time mm. off the cage. Yeah, damn. That's a nice kick, though. Yeah. You think, you think Dustin was expecting Gaethje to throw kicks like that? No. Look, 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 yeah, he, it doesn't he, look like it, but he mm. still blocked it. But I feel like Justin Gaethje is such a savage. And then all, also, like, Trevor Whitman, you know, phenomenal coach. And he, he, he didn't block it. He had his hand up. but oh, it was, just wrapped around it. Okay. Yeah, he didn't block Because you got to block him like Other this. Other hand, Because yeah. you can break your arm that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. You could break your arm with a ch checking a leg kick? A head kick? Oh, yeah. With one arm? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? The, the, the bone of the leg when he, you're checking that head kick? Yeah. That, 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 oh, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Look, he had his hand up. But look. He had his hand up because he his reaction time, right? Mm -hmm. He he react like this, but you gotta react like this. You gotta block that head kick with both hands because you can break your arm because that shin bone and swinging at a certain speed is like getting hit in the head with a baseball bat. Ugh. You you ever block, blocked checked a head kick? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Uh yeah. Who threw the hardest head kick at you? The hardest head kick. I fought a guy in my debut, uh John Tuck. He was he was throwing some heat. What about you? Man, I got kicked in the head my first professional fight uh, against Marvin Eastman. Oh, wow. That's a good he, name. He kicked, he, he kicked me in the head. I was, just like you, that they lied. They told me he was a uh, kickboxer only, but he was a wrestler and a kickboxer. So I, 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 he, I had my hands down. He kicked me in the head, and I was like, oh, damn. You know, I, and I learned from it, and yeah. I'd never been kicked in the head again uh, except for years later, even in practice, years later, I was training with this young kid. Uh, I can't even remember his name, but he, he, I was messing around with him. He kicked me in the head, and I was like, oh, man, that's my second time ever getting kicked in the head. But it was, 20 nice. years went by. 20, yeah. 25 years went by. Yeah. Um, 20 years. Num number four, we have Makachev's KO over Volk. This was a uh, pretty deadly head kick as well, I would say. Oh. I didn't think Volk He just caught him on, like, the top of the head, you know? He, he, he put his hands up, but it just came over his... It's kind of crazy because it doesn't even look like it made contact, huh? It nope. looked like it kind of just like, like kind of like swift over, like just like kind of like kind of skimmed the top yeah, of his like head. Yeah, like just skimmed it. But I'm saying, like he, like Rampage said, it's bat to your head. Like yeah. it don't, it doesn't take much. Yeah, yeah. It and looks like he was kicking up out too. Of it. Yeah, yeah. That top, and the top of the head, that's very bad. That's yeah. very bad. Yeah, you get punched or kicked. There. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where, yeah, that's where you're kind of going down. Oh yeah. And look at his leg just buckle fall from underneath him. And it's like Islam already knows his power. Like, obviously, their first fight was insane. But, I mean, at this point, it was just kind of like his – he was in control the whole time. There was nothing even – it was so fast. Number three, we have Jalen Turner's KO <laughs> over the one and only Bobby Green, which was a uh, pretty vicious KO. Bobby Green, a phenomenal fighter. Jalen stepping in at the last moment. And uh, as you can see, it kind of wobbles, goes down, and then Jalen just takes it to him. If I'm going to be honest here, I would have gave that one KO. Knockout of the year because yours is more brutal than because Jalen took that one on short notice. If I'm gonna be brutal honest, your, I, I like your knockout. Your knockout was was sick, but this guy took the fight on short notice. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So if if I was if I was the one to say, oh, knockout of the year, and and but this is me being biased because I I like Jalen too. Yeah, and I've, I've known him. I just met you, so let me <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Rampage straight to the guy, straight to the guy says, "Hey, this, this should have won knockout of the year." No, no, Num- because, number two, no, only yeah. because he took it on. He took it on. He took the fight on short notice. He, he did cut like twenty five pounds. He told me in nine days, and we were here when he when he had to take the fight. Yeah, Jalen was actually here at a photo shoot at Jackson. Oh wow! We were shooting our new chains. We were dropping some new pieces. He was here as one of our athletes, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Yo, I'm getting this fight." And Bobby Green was here as well. We had a mariachi band here, Damn. and we had Coach Bobby, which was Rampage's coach here. It was his birthday, so a lot went down within two hours but he had to cut like 25 pounds for this fight and he made weight yeah. we, i went and watched him at tiki's gym and hb it was a phenomenal That's fight crazy, yeah. but, but i'm gonna say your, your knockout was better because his wasn't clean he had it piece him up a little bit so i i understand why you know I, <laughs> well I, he, I think just to clarify too most people when they consider a knockout they want knockout. as little to as least punches or kicks having to be thrown as right, possible right. to get the ko right so that's the only that's reason why, I feel, why i've seen a lot of these so far they're all tkos yeah right yeah, right yeah, so yeah yeah, yeah. so it's not out of the year right so, right this is right, not right. all right you guys go for it all right yeah good point. damn he's hey, right you see how he's getting technical yeah. that's a team alpha male that's a uriah favorite that's like no, we, they're very thinking. technical yeah, with their analysis no, but he's but but in all fairness he's right though yeah in all fairness i like the fact that you can appreciate someone who gives you something to the table yeah, and, and you can respectfully sit there and yeah. take it. That's re- nice of you. I respect, I respect it because you wouldn't have said that if, that if that was Adrian Broner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number two, we have Adesanya's KO over Alex, which is just finally, right? I mean, this guy needed this in his career and it seems like Alex just overextends. He goes Ooh. to town and, Hello. See that that would have happened in that first fight if the bell didn't ring. You remember? You remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Same, he, 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 he got saved by the bell. Yeah, you're same right. way. Yeah, the same punch. Yo, Josh, is the is the bow and arrow to the head needed for Adesanya when Alex is on the floor? You think that that celebration dance is needed? Hey, whatever he wants. Look to at do, this right man. here. <laughs> when he puts him down, it seems like. Uh, I think it's just all that man because he he had his number. And then Izzy, yeah, put him out and. I don't know. Man, man, we don't. Well, people don't talk about the the guy Alex. He he just seemed like a bully to me because he looked so much bigger than Izzy, he's right? Huge, yeah. Then I met Izzy in Saudi Arabia. Uh-huh. He's big as hell. He dig. Yeah. So how big is the other damn guy? That's true. God now damn. he's the, the light heavyweight champion, right? Izzy, no, that's not even light heavyweight. That's no, like, no. This, but I'm saying now Kaeda he's like, is yeah. light yeah. He went, he, He's gonna go up and and fight a. Uh, for that interim title at heavyweight, right? Yeah, is that what he wants he, to do? I think he wants to go to heavyweight. Dude, that's insane. I think that the interim title at heavyweight now is just so such a chaos. Wants to fight Aspinall. Yep, and it's such a yeah, chaos because wow. Jones and the way they have everybody waiting, and yeah. then Stipe doesn't want to fight. So I think everybody's kind of all over the boards. So I think he wants to move up Dude. and say, "Yo, come that's get some." That first person ever, right, to even fight for three titles. That'd be three, three title fights. Classes. Wow. Yeah, it'd be pretty insane. And then. For number Man, one, savage. here let's, we go. Let's see. Let's see this one uh, minus the, the 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 end. And this is the Jackson Podcast 2023 Knockout of the Year. Josh Emmett, the one and only, sitting right here, live and direct in studio. Oh, Ooh, what what was that? Vicious right hand. Unbelievable. Yeah, people can't uh, people can't get mad at you for 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 that. I mean, yeah. he just comes right into it, and it's just. Look at all that aggression letting out. Oh. <laughs> take a take a nap. Take it. Oh this, my god! Oh, this was in the first round, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched this. I watched this fight. Okay. Yeah, and I, I remember. I remember. Like what? What was that? Oh, overhand. Overhand, right? Oh he just ducked right into it. Like he had no chance. Yo, it hurts me just watching it right now, bro. I thought you broke your hand because I heard it. Yeah, it was, it was that loud crack. Yeah, that's what my uh, my boxing coach was asking too. Everyone was asking me, "How's your right hand?" Like, it's fine. Like, I I didn't hear that. Yeah, I didn't hear that sound till obviously after, you know, because we're in the moment so loud. But everyone kept asking me that. Is your hand okay? I'm like, yeah, why? Like, oh, and then wow. I watch it and I hear the sound in like live, like live motion. And I'm like, Damn, but did you what see the that? Hell was did that? Did you see noise? that coming? Like, did, yeah. were you thinking to throw that punch or did he come into it at the perfect time? No, I think it's both. I, I start setting him up. I'm, I'm jabbing at the body. I keep throwing this hook up here, thinking, and then I just bring my head across the, the center line and throw the overhand right because he starts fading off to the to his left my right so that's why i'm kind of setting him up with that thinking i'm just going to throw a hook right here 
Bro, this is one of the best overhands I've seen uh, in boxing or or MMA. But I land all the time. It's like a lot of people always like, oh, that's that lucky wrestler with just all he has is the overhand right. I'm like, all right, I'm a lucky <laughs> motherfucker. I should play the the lotto a little that's, more. That's, yeah. that's, that's your that's your that's your go to punch. I landed on Evan. I have I have a, another walk off uh, knockout just like that too. Wow, he I mean, should if he's landing it all the time. Uh, you got to look out for that. I mean, bro. It, he just walked right into it. The craziest thing is it's one thing to have power. It's another thing to just connect this. It's like pinpoint accuracy straight to the middle of his head. But when when Bryce Mitchell collapses, you could just see the power goes from his head straight to his feet instantaneously. Like, I thought you broke the guy's neck. I'm not even joking around. It was so much power for him to just fall like that. I have not seen someone just get dropped like that in a long time. Yeah, yeah. He he didn't have any fractures or anything on his no, face. No, he was fine. That yeah. is crazy to me. I, I bet he got a concussion though. He's concussed though. Huh? This yeah, was the one I against Johnson. This what? was one of my favorite ones. Oh, let me see that. One. Let me see yeah. that again. This oh. was Josh. This is when you. I don't remember what you were ranked ten or something. Yeah. 10. Oh. Yeah, that was that was that nasty. Is crazy. That was nasty too. Same thing. Well, he didn't even see that. Was that his tooth? That, oh, that was spit. Spit. Oh my. oh my! That's just not. That's, that's coming a, out of that's his That's what nose. you call a slobber knocker. <laughs> that's a slobber oh, knocker. Oh, look at that! It came. Oh, he look. He was asleep before he hit the ground. Yeah. So he's asleep in midair. Yeah, he was out. Like already knocked out. Yeah, he was already knocked out before wow. he hit the, before he hit the ground. Like his, yeah, that's gotta hurt. His body, his body just shut. That's what happened. He just yeah. shut down. Like he's trying to protect you, huh? It's like instantly. No yeah. more. Go no, to sleep. Like yeah, no more. Like, Hello. How, how long was he show out? Show him the the Lamas one because Rampage haven't seen it. No, Pull I haven't it seen it yet. We're going to have Josh Emmett show his highlight reel right yeah, now. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just want to no, show you. I like show this. You this. I like this. Yeah, Pull yeah, it up. Yeah. This is what we need. Yeah. Josh coming out of the shell a little bit, dude. <laughs> He's making me like an even bigger fan. I, see, I like when people finish fights and knockouts. I like to see that type of stuff. I, you know, I, you know when I checked out of MMA, I'm not going to lie. When, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jackson. Jackson. Uh, Greg Jackson, what was his name? Uh-huh. He coach. started uh, He started game planning too much. Okay. I kind of checked out. A lot of fighters was training with him and doing this shit. Like, you, you didn't train there at all, though, did hell you? Hell no. Oh, oh my. That's left hook. The left hook. But I tried to hit him with that right hand. The overhand I missed, so I had to bring back the left hook. Let's I, see that. Let's see that. Bro, I'm I'm finna start, bro, I'm finna start training see. that. The overhand left hook. That that's a that's vicious. You know, uh it, John Hackleman. He he was a he's a big fan of just like the left hook. So he was like breaking down, you know, just in like a self defense in a street fight. No one expects just a left hook, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's he was, oh. he was a big fan of that. And Lamas was ranked number three, three going at the into time. This fight. So yeah. I, I took this fight on a like two and a half week notice. That's when I cut a, a lot of weight. Oh, uh, did you get knocked out a year for that one? No. I Can we go back? Can we go back and get him knocked out of the year for that? What <laughs> that year was that? Crazy. Uh, that? That was 2017. Uh, oh, Michael Johnson was 19, oh, 2019. Right? Five, six, six. Yeah, yeah. Man, we right. got to look up who got knocked out of the year in 2017 because because my boy right here got robbed. Wait, that that left hook, were you were you practicing that before you went into the fight? Or No, I just throw like, I try to throw overhand right, but then I, I just like load that left side to so just bring the left oh, hook back. It. So got I'm just it. saying since I miss with the overhand right. I'll bring kinda, that left hook back. Kind of reminds me of your 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 role a little bit. He kind of like fires from the right. They don't expect it, and then here comes the left. Yeah, that's what we're designed for. But I'm I'm gonna be honest. That what I just saw that overhand to left hook. That's that's na that's like one of the nastiest things I've I've seen. Yeah. How many knockouts you got? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm the same way. I don't. I don't, yeah. I don't know my. I don't even know my fight yeah. record. I gotta I mean, get my notes. Logan was just talking to me earlier. He said, how many knockouts? I said, I don't know. Boxers uh, know this shit, but MMA yeah. guys, I, I guess. I, 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 like just, I just know my record, but I, I could tell you every single like date. Like, you know, you tell me the fighter, I'm like, oh, it was this date. Like, I know exactly uh, yeah, the year and everything and where great. I fought, but I, I don't I don't know my, and that's one thing. I, I don't like, like, this is fine. Like, cause you guys are asking me questions, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't like just talking about myself. Like when I'm talking to people, I always like change the subject. Like, I'm like, oh, how you been, man? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, it's I don't, I don't like it. You know, it's kind of yeah. how, yeah. how are you with the fans that come up to you and stuff? Good. Like that? I, I, I'm like, I'll always t stand there, take pictures, sign, whatever. Like, are, even are you the, used to it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. And, and the UFC, like, they've never seen with the security. You know, they're like, I've never seen anyone. I'll stay there and sign everything, take picture with everyone because I know what it feels like to be a fan like i remember like i would have waited for hours to get a picture with my favorite fighter or whatever it is and, and watching like you know baseball and football growing up so it's like i know what it feels like so i will off often do it all the time because i'm not it's crazy yeah. it's crazy. since 2007 
is when I became popular here in mm-hmm. America and I'm still not used to it. Because wow. I used to fight in Japan. I used to yeah, be yeah. popular in Japan. Then I come home and only hardcore fans knew me. Yeah. So I had like a cool life. I could still, you know, <laughs> when I want, I, I did like that attention. When I went to Japan, I would uh-huh. get that attention. And, and, you know, Japan, MMA had groupies back in the day. <laughs> like in America, they don't have groupies. <laughs> so I used to like all that stuff. Then I come home, nobody knew me. I go yeah. out to the clubs, bars. It was uh-huh. cool. But then after the Chuck Liddell fight, it was like overnight, and yeah. it's and and still to this day, I'm not used to it. It's weird. Wow. It's and, weird. But you have you have so much going on too, though. You yeah, know what I mean? it's hard. For, it's hard for me to get used yeah. to. I was just wondering how you did. Yeah, no, I, I I just I do it, but then it's like my close circle that I've had like the same friends forever. So mm-hmm. they they're like, oh, that's just Josh. They're like, oh, it's fucking weird that people are coming up. They're like, I forget, you know, and they're like, go take out the trash, Josh. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I lost friends. <laughs> I lost friends because my friends, uh, I was I had really close friends. We was like best friends. I would play video games together. We trained together and stuff. And he got tired of people coming up to him and asking him to take a picture. People just come up yeah. to him and they wouldn't even ask him. And they just give him the cam- the yeah. phone or the camera, to, you know, take a picture. And he was like, after a while, he just stopped hanging out with me. I was like, wow. oh. it, it was it was kind of it was kind of hard to yeah. to adjust to. And, and but real it's talk, crazy, I know man. you're married and stuff. But would your wife ever get mad if a girl asked you to sign her titties? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of wife is that? Would she get yeah, mad? Yeah, of course she would. She get mad if you sign some uh, fan titties. I, I, I want to do it. You wouldn't. Oh, you, you wouldn't like, do it. You like, nah, oh, I'm that's married. a nice guy. Yeah, I want to do it. You like, nah, I'm married. I ain't. You wouldn't be like, yo, cover it up, and I'll just sign and like. Uh, or maybe I had to ask her, but that's can I do this real quick? <laughs> See, that's good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's good. Actually, that's healthy because you don't want to have no problems. Because, because what I've what I've learned in some relationships, if you date a girl, she she don't want you to get all attention. She wants the attention. I'm not saying about his wife, yeah. but you know, you ever sent titty? Huh? You ever sent titty? I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, I signed yeah, titties. Bro, I was gonna say, I'll say yes, he has. I signed titties, butt cheeks. I don't give a fuck. I signed the baby <laughs> forehead once. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what else you saying? <laughs> right, that's oh, that's about that's it. Awesome. Some titties and butt cheeks oh, and the baby's awesome. forehead. That's about all. <laughs> I signed I, in Japan. I signed one dude's forehead. Really? Yeah. I'm um, in Japan. Signed my forehead. Yeah, I signed some dude's forehead in Japan. Japan got the best fans yeah. ever. But they're so, super respectful they're too, right? Very respectful. Yeah. But they that, love you. That that's the one thing like I like fighting overseas. It's like the first fight, the the arena is sold out. But then it's like you come here and the, they don't come till like the the last two fights of the the main mm-hmm. card yeah, and then you yeah. got all the crazy fans like yeah. saying a bunch of shit but everyone in Europe and, and especially I could only imagine in you know Asia they're just so respectful and probably bro, just happy to see you bro, yeah. it, it was crazy my, my first experience when I fought Sakuraba I got arrested right right before going to to right as soon as I got past the you know when you give your passport on uh-huh. an airplane airport police fucking arrest me hems me up that's a whole nother story gonna be in my book and and I got to I got bailed out, got to Japan, and when I got to the hotel, there was a whole lot of people there. And so Japan uh, had promoted me as this bad boy going to jail fighting Sakuraba because Sakuraba had just lost to Vanderlei, so they needed somebody super tough, look super mean, that couldn't beat uh, Sakuraba. Mm. And I was the perfect guy, right? So when I got to the hotel, they already had trading cards of me. And I've never fought anywhere besides King of the wow. Cage. And so they was like, you already famous here in Japan. You was all the newspapers coming to fight Sakuraba. Sakuraba was that famous yeah. that it made me famous, just like whoever fought Conor McGregor now, oh, you know cool. what I'm saying? Yeah. And they had a, 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 one of those uh, trading cards you know how you put it in like the plastic thing, like yeah, thick. Yeah, mm-hmm. And one fan, he gave me one because he knew I didn't have, I didn't have it. Oh, that's and, cool. and he had me sign his. It was crazy. That was yeah. my first time, like wow, signing autographs and being in Japan. A, a, a boy from Memphis going to a whole nother country, and then the fans like knew me already yeah. and, and loved me. And then after the fight, some girl gave me an ear job. Bro, I was in heaven. <laughs> I'm like, there he is a guy. He got his first ear job in Japan. The guy thought he made it. It's yeah, I had my first ear job like, I made in Japan. It. My first threesome in Japan. I mean, what? Goodness. You had a threesome in Japan? My first one with two judo girls. One had cauliflower ear and it didn't stop me. I gave her the ear job. <laughs> You had a threesome uh, with two girls who did judo, and they were just flipping you all over the no, room. No, no, no. They yeah, wasn't. They were judo. They was girls that did judo. So you had two girls flip you around. No, around in I Japan. didn't. They didn't flip me around. <laughs> yeah, you did. You were into that. No, I was not. Wow. Into that. Well, always, See, that's why he always brings up what? Ronda Rousey. He probably have crazy fantasies no, about judo. Ronda girls. Rousey was not my type. She, I did not like Ronda Rousey. There's something about that mole in the middle of her face. <laughs> I wasn't a Ronda Rousey fan at all. So Fuck you're that. into that, like girls flipping you around, like, oh, yeah, I don't no, want to be on, the man. big. I'm alpha. Like his, I'm alpha. <laughs> no, but because you you mentioned like the judo girls, I said, you said that you got I'm happy. just describing the girls that I had my first threesome with in Japan. 
But you're into that. You're into being like, oh, I'm into threesomes. Fifty Shades of Rampage. He likes all the nah, crazy nah. stuff, huh? Hell no. Nah. Yeah, what? The only thing that's getting flipped here is my words. I did two judo <laughs> girls, and I just remember I was drunk as hell, and one of them had cauliflower ear, oh, and man. normally that's so sober gross. me was like, what the fuck? It's like, you know. Cover that up. Yeah. Put your hair down. Yeah. <laughs> no. I didn't give a fuck. I was sucking on it. I was sucking on that cauliflower ear. <laughs> While the other girl was sucking up right there. Like, ah, <laughs> you sucked on cow. Okay. Uh, in, your, in your first three summer in Japan, you sucked on a cauliflower she was, ear. She was subconscious about that it. Is disgusting. When I saw it, she was like subconscious Jesus. about it. Jesus. I'm not so for you in she Spanish. Was, she, I wasn't finna ruin my threesome because she because I, I noticed her <laughs> damn cauliflower ear. I wasn't finna let that ruin my night. I can't wait for you guys like, to throw me like, around the mats. I was like, girl, I don't, hey, you ever seen, uh, I, I can't go, I can't describe the, the the memes and stuff, but I was like, I ain't finna let that ruin, that call ain't finna ruin my night. Honestly, uh, you're one of a kind. Honestly. Honestly, there will, not, never, there will never be another rampage. You just not, you just not learning that. The enough. fact that you are into two, like, jiu-jitsu girl, <laughs> no, judo girls okay, to throw okay. you around the mats and make you all crazy and be like, no, I'm not the champion was, you girls are. And, like, you, you, let them, no, you let them do whatever they want no, to while they're wearing your belt. Like, that no, is crazy to no, me. No, no, honestly, these, these two judo girls, they was actually hot. They was not bad looking because because judo is like a national sport over there, yeah, right? Yeah. And, but these girls, they was really into it. And they was, like, really, they, told, no, they said it was really judo. good. At judo. And my friend hooked me up with him. He said, yeah, these girls are really good. He said, both of them like you. They can't decide which one get you. And, and he said, I told him, well, you both can have them. And, and he he <laughs> set it up for me. And I we hung out. We had a good time. We went back to my hotel room. Awesome. And, uh, and I was like, all right, y'all do judo. I'm, <laughs> you know, it's all good. <laughs> Two judo, one rampage on OnlyFans. It's going to make a fortune this year. Oh, God damn. I'm going to set that up. I'm going to set up a little no. video. I can never do OnlyFans. I hope my mama don't hear about my first three. Two judo, mama. one rampage. That's going to be an amazing video. Nah, the instructional. Learn how to get flipped around. I've been looking. I've been, every time I go back to Japan, I've been looking for those damn two judo girls. <laughs> okay. On that note, on that note. We are going to just end this real quick with this uh, Francis Ngannou uh, Overeem 2017 knockout. And oh, then this we, was the uppercut. Then. Yeah. This was good. Yo, run this play real quick before we end the video. Oh, this was KO of the year in 2017? Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, Thank okay, you. okay, okay, okay. I give okay. it to him. This, all right, all this right. Was, so this is this what Josh year. lost to in 2017? I was even nominated. You wasn't even nominated? What? What? Overeem looks tired in this video. Look at Ganyu's head movement. It was, oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I've been, oh my I've been, God. I've been knowing Overeem since he was like light heavyweight, uh -huh. a little skinny guy, in Pride. Uh -huh. He's he had a lot of kickboxing fights. He's a world class kickboxer, but for some reason he was worried about Francis Ngannou. Just his power. What do you mean? Yeah, because I can tell by the way he's fighting. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Look, look, uh, go. Look at how he's ducking down. Look. You don't do oh, that. Yeah. You don't do that, especially in MMA. Look how he's fighting. He oh. was worried about Francis, and so he wasn't. He wasn't himself that night. He wasn't not setting up no kicks. But even from like a traditional, like Dutch style kickboxer, that yeah, like what you're saying, yeah. how he points it out, how he's ducking his head, like yeah. you don't see that. They're you don't upright. See that. Yeah. Look at him. Watch him. Look at him. Look at what he's doing. He's standing there too long. Oh my god, that was, was nasty. That was nasty. In his, that was bad. In, in his prime, though, he was unstoppable. They didn't even have guys for him to fight. He was so good. This guy was just running through divisions and organizations. I think he went back to kickboxing after this fight, right? And did well, right? Did, oh, did, he? did he not? Did he go back? No. Is he in know. kickboxing right now? Is he still in the UFC or did he retire? He did that one it's, kickboxing organization, fought one fight, won the belt, and then they never had Glo anybody else glory? for him to fight. Glory? I think it was Glory. Then they he, never had anybody else for him to fight. Overeem is a phenomenal yeah. kickboxer. That's not like him. To I, uh, my debut, he was, uh, he was the main event. Because he's from Rotterdam, mm. uh, near Amsterd mm -hmm. Amsterdam out there. He fought um, Arlowski. They were the main event. Mm. Yeah. Did he win that one? Um, you don't remember? Arlowski won, I think. Uh, well, it was like, uh, was Arlowski like submit him or take him down and ground a pound or something like that? I, I don't even know. I don't see I don't event. see Arlowski beating him on his feet. Like Maybe, maybe he, I don't know. I, I swear he, I didn't watch the fight because, you know, you, you fight and then yeah, I, yeah, I left. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I swear because he was, uh, he was with his like, his friends and they were all like just drinking in the bar like 
doing some like chant and stuff. I just remember that like 5 a.m. going through the bar. And After the like, fight? Yeah, like in the morning. Yeah, just ole. They're like doing their thing and they're all drinking these beers. So I just assumed he won, but oh, okay. I should probably look and see if he actually won. Uh, unless were you friends with Overeem? Yeah, yeah, man. Overeem, uh, we always been, we always been um, really good friends. He, he was always been cool. And I was always thinking that we was going to end up fighting each other in pride, but it, we never fought each other. We was in the same weight class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A good, great fighter, and yeah. in his yeah, prime, he was fighter. one of those like unstoppable figures that everybody talked about. And then, yeah. you know, and he came from overseas. He was like one of those first guys that was like a big name overseas that kept his name in every organization he went to. Yeah. His pride highlights and those glory highlights yeah. and the kickboxing, everything he did. It seems like every organization he went to, he was the big show. You yeah, know? bro, bro's a legend. He's 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 yeah. a he's a legend. Um, I remember his older brother too, um, Overeem. He had an older brother, but. I didn't he, know that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He had an older brother that was fighting in, in Pride. Let me let me think if that was his brother or just his teammate. Overeem. Yeah, he, yeah. I can't remember his name. Vinny, what's Overeem's brother's name? If I because uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, he did have an older brother. His older brother didn't get as popular as him, but he used to train with Gilbert Evell. Yeah, Valentine Overeem. Oh, his wow. brother was fighting in Pride too. Wow, his rampage. brother. His what, what weight was he? I think he was heavyweight. Oh, his damn. brother was heavyweight, and he was he was actually pretty good. But Overeem was better, and he's they used to train with Gilbert Evell, mm -hmm. and and um, I was cool with all them till Gilbert Evell fucked one of my bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, before we stop the podcast, what happened? Gilbert Evell fucked one of my bitches. My first Overeem's Japanese. coach. No, his teammate Gilbert Evell. Overeem's Vell. teammate took your girl. He took my chick, man. Where? Uh, she she flew to Harlem to go smack. I think he had a threesome wait, with her. Wait, 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 wait. Overeem's, That's going to be in my book, too. Overeem's, I was writing a movie about the shit. Over, Overeem's teammate flew your girlfriend to Holland yeah. to take her down. She was sexy as fuck, bro. How do you let your girl fly to Holland to go see another I, I left Japan, and it was his coach, his trainer. He They set me up. We was on a bus, and my girl was sexy as fuck, but she was a fucking nympho. I ain't going to lie. And... and um, <laughs> She was. She was an info. She was. Bro, that girl was crazy. And uh, she was good, though. She was sexy. Her name was Mai. I never forget. My first Japanese girl from Japan. She was a nail artist. She can paint anything on her nails, right? She paint your nails? Hell no. Okay. You and Adesanya both paint your nails? No, I don't do okay, no, I'm I'm just shit like that. I don't right. do no shit like right, that. But anyway, the coach, I forgot his name, a little bit of dude, he was like, hey, Rampage, um, do you mind if your girlfriend... Um, take me to get a cell phone tomorrow? Because I was... And I was leaving... The, that day he said yeah after you fly out I'm gonna have her take me to get a cell phone cause she spoke a little English and, she, and I'm like yeah 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 go ahead the whole time Overeem told his coach to wow. do that and then then I then I found out um, Heath Heron is the one that told me Heath Heron told me he's like hey bro I was with I came back to Japan I was with Heath Heron I love, I love Heath Heron he's the man he was like hey quit fucking with that girl right there I said why he said <laughs> he was like <laughs> Took her down. I was like, "What? Like, wow. My bitch!" And I asked her. I was like, "I was like, hey, you been fucking other months?" She said, "Yeah." I was like, and she said, "Haven't you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I've been fucking motherfuckers because we long this relationship." I said, "But I ain't fuck nobody, you know." She said, "Oh, you know?" I was like, "Yeah, bitch, I know." Why are you fucking motherfuckers? I know. <laughs> like that's the thing. What'd like, you do? I, I, I'm I, in. Did I'm, you get one more slice? No, nah, I ain't never smash her no more. No, you didn't even get a little something. Nah, no, you lying. No, I'm not lying. I, I didn't get none. I didn't get. So I, you just let her go. I just let her go, and then because uh, the she fucked somebody, because she fucked somebody I know. Another that's, one. That's a no, 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 no. She fucked. That's right. somebody I knew. Like so that was that's it. that's like crossing the line. And then years later, I saw her walking down the street in Rapungi with some black guy. And now she speak perfect English. She walked by. She said, "Oh, hey, Rampage." And I was like, "Oh, fuck you." Say, she said, you? "I said, love you." <laughs> I said, "Love you, Rampage." And I was thinking about fucking her dead. My she was with her, so, she was with her, some black dude. I was thinking about, "Well, you love me, bitch. Go give me some of that pussy." <laughs> But You're she was with another black dude. He kept walking. He knew who I was. He, yeah. he kept walking. Poor Josh. Like, he married. He don't want to hear this. Man, come on. I'm, not, oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Josh. You oh, out of control. I, I just keep it real. You for sure like took it. her but down it, that night. She like bring it. back memories. Bro, you for no, sure took her down that night. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I yes, went home did. by myself. I had, I had. You always tell me you be doing freaky things in Japan. No, no come on. I don't tell I don't tell nobody my, my, my no, freaky you told escapades. You told me about that crazy thing you did with the robots in Shibuya. Nah, he's. Did you or no? No, yes or no? Remember the movie with Wolverine when he's like a robot? 
robot guy and he like gets to control the robot with the kid. Josh, so don't believe him. No, nah, remember you told me one night you went to that club where you get to do whatever you want to a robot? You were like, yeah, I feel like Wolverine in the movie. I yes told, no? I, I, I already told too much on yes this or podcast. No. no. Okay. So I, the, only, I, the freakiest thing I did was the judo chicks. That's the freakiest thing I did. So you never did anything with a robot? Never. I just want to make sure. No, no toys, no robot. I ain't like that. Come on. No, because if that's a rumor, we just want to, we want to smash. Next thing you know, Bobby Green will be like, come on. I got some more whispers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's a wrap, dude. Josh Emmett, 2023 Jackson Podcast Awards. He won Knockout of the Year. It's amazing to give you that award live in person. We have something being made for you, very special. You ain't got the you ain't got the award here for him. No, we do. We have to mail it to him because it has his name on it. Oh, this respect. It's, cool, it's, thank it's you. customization. Appreciate you guys. Customization. Yeah. You, you earned it, bro. That was a good thank knockout. You. And thank you for showing me some combos. I'm really going to train that for real. Cool, real talk. You. And we appreciate all the support and we appreciate you coming on the show. If you guys are looking for the rest of the awards, it'll be in another video. Make sure you guys check it out and leave a comment. Let us know who you want to see next on the Jackson Podcast. I'm Bear DeGidio, the one and only Josh Emmett, and the Shibuya master over here, <laughs> <laughs> Man, Jackson. We're out. We're out.